Okay, let's start by diving into this geometry object and we'll drop down the Capybara test geometry. With the Capybara asset, we can output the outer skin, the muscle surfaces, bones, and the animated skeleton, which we'll use shortly. So let's switch the output to muscles and then we can convert these polygonal surfaces to solids. We'll use a muscle solidify node to do that for us. This node will loop through each of the connected pieces on the incoming geometry and convert it to tetrahedrons. Um, there are parameters here that allow us to go in and change the resolution of those tets. Um, so for instance, if I just raise the minimum size slightly, we're going to get a slightly coarser model, but that should be sufficient for what we're going to do here today. Now I might also add that all the muscle tools that we're going to be interested in can be found by hitting the tab menu, going under character effects, and then over to the muscles sub tab. So everything we need we'll find in this area here. So while we're here, we're going to grab the muscle solver node, which we can now drop down and append to our network. Let that initialize. And if we look at the output of this node here now, um, we're ready to start simulating with this geometry. Um, let me just first turn on the ground plane so that we have something to collide with. So if I run that, um, we won't have much of a muscle simulation going on as much as we do just a bunch of soft body objects falling to the floor and colliding with each other. Let me come over here and adjust my frame range. And if we play that, like I said, it's a uh, just a collection of soft body objects falling. So how do we get this to look more like a muscle simulation? Let's duplicate the capybara asset and switch the output to bone surfaces. And this will now give us our skeleton model, which um, is not animated at all. It's a static, it's a static skeleton. And if we wire the output to the second input on the muscle solver, the second input is expecting the attachment target for the muscles. And maybe we can play our simulation at this point to get an idea of where things are. And now we get a new avalanche of soft body objects, this time finding new collision geometry on its way down. So let's take this one step further. Let's come back over to our solid muscles and let's layer on some attributes that will inform the muscle solver node how to configure the constraints that will attach to the bones. So we'll drop down a muscle constraint properties node. And as we wire that in, um, we'll save the details for exactly how the muscles relate to the bones um, for later on in the video series. For now, we'll just uh, connect it to the muscle solver and just get the default values to work for us for this example. Let's uh, hit play and see where our simulation goes next. And as that's solving, already we can see that the muscles are no longer falling off. They are, um, they are keeping an attachment, somewhat springy, but um, again, nothing's been tweaked at this point. Okay, so let's continue to build on this and maybe we can add some more movement. As things currently stand, we're using the static non-animated output from the capybara asset to give us our skeleton. Um, but this asset does give us animated joints on the second and third outputs. So what we can do is drop down a joint deform node. And as we wire that up, all of a sudden now we see we have animation on our skeleton. Now, normally we'd be able to take this animated skeleton and feed it directly into the muscle solver, but there is a small issue that we're going to need to address before moving on. If we look at the components as they arrive into the muscle solver, uh, we see that the initial position for the bones and the muscles no longer sync up. And this is due to the skeleton geometry coming from an animated position right from frame one and the muscles being set up in uh, the rest position. To fix this, we'll need to intercept the joint animation coming out of the third input. 
and transition into it from the rest position. So we'll use a skeleton blend sop here to blend from the T-post position into the animated output. And we can simply keyframe that transition so that at the first frame, we're at a weight of zero, i.e. the rest pose. And by frame five, let's say, we transition fully into our animated joints. Confirm that the transition is working. And if we look at the initial setup for the muscle solver, we are now back in business. We'll start the simulation up and we can see now that the muscles are staying attached to the animated bone positions. That's looking pretty springy and loose as far as an attachment goes. So maybe we can tweak that a little bit just before we move forward. We'll come back up here to the muscle constraint properties and I'm just going to go over to the um, muscle to bone tab and enable the stiffness parameter. Let's see what a stiffness value of 10 is going to give us. Come back to the solver node, run that one more time. And sure enough, that has stiffened up the constraints quite a bit. So this is a constraint that's attaching each muscle to whatever bone it finds in, the, in its vicinity. And uh, by stiffening it up, we've um, removed a lot of the springy quality that the muscle to bone attachments had. So maybe the stiffness here is a little too high. Uh, we may want to bring back a little bit of the bounce and uh, just relax that spring a little bit. So let's do that. Once again, come back up here. Let's say take that down to five. And we'll run it once more. So that's looking a little more dynamic. We're getting some bounce and some secondary motion. So I'm just about to run my simulation and write the output to disk. I've added a file cache node here to capture the output. But before I do that, there's uh, uh, one or two things we want to just talk about real quick here. Um, the, uh, when, the, when the muscle solver uh, configures its constraints, it does this by um, going back to a rest position. So it takes away your animation, puts your geometry in the rest position, and configures the constraints there. The, uh, the rest position by convention is something we're calling T-pose. Now, where is T-pose coming from? Uh, for starters, on the muscle solver, if we scroll down, we see here that under rest position, the muscle solver is expecting to find a T-pose attribute on the muscle input and a separately named T-pose attribute on the bones. Now, the muscle input, um, if we look at from the point when we solidified the geometry, that T-pose attribute was generated for us automatically. So basically, it's capturing the construction position for all the data. And, and storing it as a rest position named T-pose. On the bone side, uh, since the source of the bones could be from anywhere, um, we need to ensure that the attribute is placed there manually. By, by default, if the uh, solver does not find uh, these attributes, the, the rest position attributes, it will use the uh, start frame, the initialization frame here, as though it were the T-pose. So it will um, park everything at this frame, construct the constraints, and carry on from there. Um, but let's put in a, a, a T-pose attribute in here explicitly. So to do that, we simply um, append um, um, a modified version of the rest position SOP that we find here under this tool called set T-pose. And what it's doing is it's simply capturing the uh, incoming position as a rest attribute, naming it T-pose. So now as this data flows through, um, the muscle solver will find the T-pose and make all the necessary connections as it did before. And just before we run our simulation and save it out, the output from the muscle solver included uh, all the original attributes and uh, groups that uh, were necessary for it to run. Um, as we move forward into the next pass for the tissue solver, those attributes and groups are no longer needed. Also, we only really need polygonal geometry uh, when we get to our tissue pass. So we're going to go ahead and convert the tetrahedrons to polygons as well. Okay, so for the cleanup, um, as I said, we are converting uh, our tets to uh, polygons. So what we end up with here are just the polygonal shells that surround our, our muscles. Um, we're going to delete 
all attributes. So I've uh, used this syntax here to just basically say clear out all attributes. And if you notice here, we're saying everything except uh, the tpose attribute. We're going to hang on to that. Now, a word about that, the, um, you may find it's more efficient to uh, save out your tpose separately and then uh, reapply it uh, later on. As, as I'm writing out a full sequence of uh, the simulation frame by frame, every single frame in my case is going to contain data that represents the tpose and it doesn't change. So uh, you can choose to uh, have a more efficient workflow if you like. But for, for my purposes, this is just a test. So uh, we're going to just make it simple and do that. Uh, and then finally, uh, removing any groups. Uh, again, we don't need anything. So we've basically stripped everything down uh, very close to the bare minimum here. Uh, also, I've um, just simply renamed uh, this file cache node as uh, a name that I can easily reference later on. And I've appended uh, a null SOP to our bone animation so that that can also be referenced and easily uh, retrieved when we need it from our second pass. So let's uh, run our simulation and uh, move forward. 